Hello everyone, Dolphin Oracle here today. Looking at Annex Core, I've got the Annex 19.1 64-bit core ISO. Weighs in about 300 meg uh, megabytes. Very small download. Um, I'm going to use this. I'm actually going to run this off my live USB. This uh, at first is going to be running off VirtualBox just so I can record the video. But once we get past this initial boot screen, I'll be handing over the boot over to the live USB that's plugged into my laptop. I'm um, going to be building a KDE Plasma desktop uh, based live USB. I'm going to do it all on the live USB. Uh, what are you going to need if you want to follow along? You're going to need a good size live uh, USB stick. I've got a 32 gigabyte um, SanDisk Cruiser that's working pretty well. I'm going to be making a 12 gigabyte persistence file. I tried this earlier with 8 gigabytes and I was just installing too much stuff. If you go with less with stuff, you can probably get by with a smaller persistence file. I found it things went a lot smoother with a 12 gigabyte persistence file. With a 32 gig USB stick, there's still enough room to do a, the remaster that we're going to need at the end of the process. Okay, so I'm going to set up the live boot here to go uh, to make things easier on our uh, set up the persistence and to make things easier on the install of the KDE. I'm going to get rid of the, the 3 and the disable. We don't need the 3 and the disable and the boot codes on the Annex Core. It's going to boot to the console environment anyway because Annex Core doesn't have a graphical environment by default. So the 3 just kind of gets in the way a little bit down the road. And also I'm going to get rid of the disable equals LXD uh, Boot code, boot parameter, because it actually disables DBus, which you don't need a whole lot when you're running from the Antix Core console environment. But if you're going to be installing a complicated graphical environment like KDE Plasma, then you're going to need DBus. So I'm just going to get rid of that disable line. Um, at this point, we're not worried about RAM savings anyway, since we're going to be installing a, a large full feature desktop environment. Okay, we also need a persistence setup. Now I am running this, since it's running off of the uh, virtual box for the video, I'm limited to the, to the virtual box's RAM, so I'm RAM strapped. I'm going to use the persistent static root. I'm only going to make a static a root persistence file. I don't really need the home one for this operation. And I'm only and I'm going to make it static so that it reads off the USB instead of burning up the virtual box machine's RAM. I'm also got to tell this thing to hand off to the USB. If you do this on real hardware, uh, you don't need all this virtual box crap. And actually, if you do this off a, on a live USB on real hardware, then you'll be able to save those boot parameters so that uh, you don't have to do it every time uh, you, you boot up. Okay, so we're going to boot up here. And it's going to take us into the console environment at the pretty little con uh, antics uh, console theme. Okay, so the default size for the for the persistence file is eight gigabytes. Uh, I'm not going to do that. I am going to go larger. So two for custom um, and 19. I used eight for a for a GNOME build not too long ago, and it worked fine. But the KDE one, for whatever reason, it, I'm having problems uh, with a if I use anything smaller than 12 gigabytes. So I'm going to go. Well, let me just say. I didn't try 10, I went from 8 to 12. So anyway, 19 makes me a 12 gigabyte persistence file. And do I want a swap file? No. And now we're going to get into the setting the password. You can make that password whatever you want. Um, it's your password. Still the demo account, but it's your password. So now we're going to finish booting up and it's going to be very simple and dump us to a prompt where it's going to tell us to log in as root to do the CLI installer or to use the Ant and you can use the Antic CLI CC control center for easy access to a lot of commands. This is all true. I'm not going to use the CLI installer uh, because uh, in the past I know I've done these builds by installing into VirtualBox. I'm not going to do that this time. The CLI installer does not do UEFI installs. So if you're doing this on real hardware and it's UEFI, it's not going to do you any good. Uh, uh, to do it that way. So I'm going to build up on VirtualBox and install later with the Annex installer which does provide for UFI support. So uh, the graphical installer I mean. So anyway for, out of the gate we're going to log in as our demo user and the demo user password and just to see what CLI Control Center has got for you just in case you're not familiar you have all sorts of 
this is like the console text version of the Annex Control Center. All sorts of handy little utilities and files. You got a radio player here, an awesome mixer. You can test your speakers. You got some simple internet tools, including a weather forecast. Uh, a device that works pretty well actually and uh, e-links uh, web browser kind of a text mode web browser and also CNE if you need to set up wireless in my virtual box environment is it's emulating an ethernet connection but uh, you know if you have wireless the nice thing about annex core versus something like the net ISO or something like that is that all the wireless stuff's pre-installed so it should work fairly well I think the only thing I noticed that wasn't what wouldn't work out of the box is probably anything requiring the Broadcom uh, STAWL drivers, the proprietary versions. But you can install those later if you need to. So we're going to back out of this. System tools, you got various things uh, for choosing your services, testing your disks, setting date and time, and the CLI Aptics package installer. Uh, feel free to check that out on your own. Um, in fact, you know what? We'll go ahead and do we do need to do updates before we install our KD environment because there are some antics updates. So I'll just show you that with the with the CLI aptics tool. It's kind of like a synaptic for the console. Okay, so it's telling me that I can update 29 packages. Uh, you can view a list to see what's going to be updated first if you want. Uh, that's pretty nice. Uh, Okay, so mostly firmware and some stuff for EU dev, which is the system D free fork of UDev. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade those now. I'm going to pause the video while this happens because, frankly, it's boring to watch text go by the screen, and I don't have much to say about firmware packages other than that they will bring a little better functionality for later devices. Okay, so up the updates all took about four minutes. There wasn't any problems. We'll go ahead and quit. But there's a lot of other features in, in Aptix CLI. Uh, if you, uh, or CLI Aptics, I should say. I do have a video on this utility in my channel. Uh, suffice to say, so go check it out. It's, uh, it's, it's a nice uh, utility for installing packages, especially from the command line. So I'm going to get out of this, and we're back to our console menu. Uh, again, this the console menu is totally optional, but it is a nice place to consolidate some features. We've got Live USB Maker, con console versions of all the persistence uh, setup tools. Very nice since there's no GUI environment by default on this. Console utilities, you can set some splashes or or fonts. Uh, Office, well, not really Office, but you've got Midnight Commander, Nano, and Vim. And then a log out install button, which fires out the uh, the CLI installer. So I'm gonna quit out of this because we don't really need it for what we're going to do. Um, that's a quick tour of the Antics uh, Live Control Center. Now to install KDE, there's a lot of ways you can do this. Um, there's the there's the Debian task select system where you could use a task select command to download everything that would be installed in a default Debian. KDE install. They have them for GNOME and Cinnamon, and I don't know if they have for Cinnamon, but they got GNOME and XSE and a couple others. Uh, I'm not going to do that. That pulls in a lot of stuff. That's going to pull in like LibreOffice and all the web browsers and email clients and some development tools and all kinds of stuff. That's probably not what everybody was going for. You just download Debian. So what we're going to do, we're going to, they also have meta packages for KDE full and KDE standard. And also for de for for Plasma, Plasma Desktop, Plasma Desktop Full, these are all various degrees of 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 how much uh, is going to be installed. If you want to see what one does, for instance, app cache, uh, not app cache, uh, apt install uh, install recommends. I'll explain that in a second. KDE Full. We'll put a slash s to simulate. It's going to show you a lot of stuff that gets installed. Uh, Guten print cups. What, what else we got in here? I mean, just gobs and gobs and gobs and gobs and gobs and gobs and gobs of stuff. Now, okay, it's going to install a lot of stuff anyway. But this is also pulling in um, a lot of tools that maybe are secondary to the KDE experience. Things that you don't necessarily want. Or maybe you do, but you're free to install those for yourself later. Uh, the, pr uh, the one we're going to do, let me clear this out, is I'm going to install KDE Standard. KDE Standard pulls in most of what you most people think of a fully functional KDE Plasma desktop. 
dolphin with some action items, uh, Kate, um, uh, Conqueror, web browser thing, uh, that sort of thing. So we're going to do all that kind of thing first. And the command for that is apt uh, install recommend. Uh, wait a minute, let me do this differently. I like to do it this way. Install, install recommends with the double dashes in front. What that is, by default, Antix, MX, and most other Debian-based distributions don't actually install what's called recommended packages by default. Debian, the Deb format uh, allows for three levels of dependencies. You've got dependencies, which have to come in when a package is installed. You've got recommends, which are packages which will probably enhance the functionality of something, but strictly speaking, they aren't required to make the package run. Or suggests which are just kind of applications that go along with whatever you're installing. Uh, Debian, by default, installs all the recommended packages like they were dependencies, like they were depends. Amex and Annex do not. So this switch lets you pull all that stuff in, because I think when you're pulling in a big desktop environment like this, those little pieces that you think may be just part of the environment may actually be in secondary packages, the way Debian splits things up. So I'm going to do install recommends. I think you'll be glad you did. Uh, and then we're going to do KDE standard not full and you can browse these packages all show up in CLI Aptics if you need to browse for a list check it out it's pretty handy and also because I know I'm doing this in VirtualBox and I happen to know that the, the VirtualBox drivers aren't in the kernel in the, de in, the, in, the f in the kernel that it ships with Annex um, core standard I'm going to go ahead and install the VirtualBox guest packages because it will make life easier later. Box guest and let's see if you double tab it will get a list of those things x11 and VirtualBox guest utils. Okay now when VirtualBox guest utils installs you're actually getting a question asked on the screen uh, except the default to not overwrite the do not overwrite the file that's already present on Annex Core. Uh, it's not a big deal either way, but uh, it'll look like a warning on boot if you're not in VirtualBox. If you say yes, if you say no, everything will be peachy keen. So I'm going to say go. This is going to take a long time. Uh, about uh, on my internet here, it takes about an hour. So I'm going to turn off the video. I will come back when we get to the question and uh, just show it to you and then uh, we'll wrap up the installation okay so here's that question I was telling you about it's the init script for the VirtualBox guest utils init script I'm just going to take the default here uh, it's fine to take the default almost there the video it's taken about 40 minutes to get to this point okay so it's finally finished uh, a little better than, uh, well, close to an hour for the total operation. I'm going to go ahead and reboot this virtual box, see if we get into a KDE desktop. Sudo reboot, and here we go. Remember, we want the 3 and the disable gone because the big desktop won't like it otherwise, and I need from USB. And, well, I need the static root all the time, but all I need it from USB because I'm doing this inside VirtualBox. Okay. Hmm. And hopefully, with any luck, we'll go all the way to the KDE Plasma desktop. This is a good sign. And there we go. We got the VirtualBox guest driver picking in, and there we are. Type in our password. Oops, wrong home keys. There we go. And into the default KDE Plasma desktop. Remember, this is running off a live USB inside VirtualBox. I'm basically making this as slow as possible at this point. But uh, up it will come here in just a sec. There's our little KDE mouse cursor. And we should get a panel here in just a minute.
and there we go. Now there are a few more tweaks. Every, most things are functional. There are a few things that aren't. I see the volume icons uh, muted and uh, we may need to make an adjustment to networks because it's not going to show any. So we'll check that in the next video. I'll show you a couple of tweaks now that we have a full desktop environment that you'll want to make to your running live USB. For tips, tricks, how-tos, head over to mxlinux.org or annexlinux.com. This is Dolphin Oracle signing off. Have a great night.